Today, I'm going to just tell you a story. So sit back and relax. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, is that the way a lot of stories start? Not this one. This story started about two years ago, and it began with a telephone call. Stevie, can you put the volume up? about pain management. We have pain clinics, for God's sake. 
stop her from being in pain? Why is it that we can't, don't have control? Martha explained it, that she had been diagnosed so long ago and they used all so many heavy hitting pain drugs that things just weren't working. She lived kind of too long. And while we were working with her, she was re-entered into the hospital to be re-evaluated for pain. And what they would do would give her a new cocktail, send her back home, and that would work for three or four days. But then the pain would come back. And that was the hardest thing to deal with. So when you're sitting on the bed with a patient, and you're holding their hand, and you're willing their pain to go through the hand into your body, that's the definition of compassion. If you have a loved one who's sick, and you're just like, I want to take this pain. Compassionate care is what a lot of nurses go into nursing for. This is a great thing for the students to learn. This story is about compassion. That's why we're here. Just be with her, hang out with her. We sang to her, we read to her. We told her jokes, we looked at birds. Martha had a lot of roles in her life. She was obviously a daughter, and she got married. She had a daughter, so she became a mother. She, put, she worked in a factory in Holyoke and put herself through school at Holyoke Community College through the nursing program. So her next role was that of a nurse. She worked in area hospitals and then joined the traveling nurses. And she was located at Roper Hospital in Charleston, South Carolina, where they finally diagnosed pancreatic cancer. She told us it was a relief. For six years, no one knew what was wrong with me. They said I was depressed. They said I had GERD. They took some parts out. And the whole time, it was pancreatic cancer. So it presented very differently. But she decided now, in her role as a patient, that now she put a new role. She wanted to be a teacher. I can go back to my alma mater, and I can teach nursing students about pancreatic cancer, which is a great idea. So the nursing faculty had a department meeting and voted unanimously to make her an honorary nurse faculty member. And the dean came over that night to the home, handed her the certificate, and I told her it was unanimous. I kind of laughed when I said unanimous. Because she just kept saying, unanimous? Unanimous? It was unanimous? And one of the nurses said, how could it not be unanimous? Like, who would ever vote against this? This is a win-win happy story. We're all feeling good, and we're helping out Martha, and she's helping us. One day I was with her, and she said, you know, Kelly, this would make a great story, like an article. And I kind of laughed, too, because I said, I kind of thought of that myself. How about you and I write something? And both of us were thinking, there's a small little newsletter in Holyoke. It's called Hello Holyoke. That would be perfect. We could write a little story about a Holyoke community alum coming back and working with nursing students. Don't you think we'd like that story? But word got out of what we were doing here, this out-of-the-box clinical experience. And we got a phone call saying, the New York Times wants to do a story about this. And that's the grand poobah. I have to tell you, we actually put the New York Times off for a while. We went to Martha a lot and said, Martha, do you get what's happening here? The New York Times. They would be in your house. They're going to invade our space. It's not a big house, and it's a very tiny room. But you had all her important things there. They're going to have cameras in your face. And Martha, you've looked better. <laughs> They're going to be asking you questions. And really, at the end of your life, don't you want to be around those you love? We're already crowded in here. And she said, I know. I know what you're saying. I want them to come. So over and over, we made sure she was clear and lucid. She said to me, I think it will help people. So we called them and said, bring it on, come on down. They sent to be Porter, her name was Abby Goodenough, and with a photographer, Ilana. And I have to tell you, they did a lovely job. They handled it with respect and dignity, and they sat with Martha, and they did not invade the space. They became part of the story. And it was really wonderful. I got nervous about what they would say or repeat or twist. And Abby said, Kelly, 
We're not the National Enquirer. <laughs> We're the New York Times. So on this January 10th, 2013, front page cover story, the New York Times with colored pictures. It was wonderful. Martha did not live to see that article. She had died earlier, but she knew it was coming. And together with the New York Times people, we went to the wake and the funeral. Um, the story really is about the legacy. Martha is the fourth one in the front row from the left. There she's a nursing student graduating, becoming an RN, and then she's in the background as well, being a teacher for her alma mater. The legacy she left, though, is more than that. These students, they're like, you know, maybe I'll become a hospice nurse. I never thought about that before. And they told all their peers. They went to a national nursing conference and talked about this experience. In our curriculum now, we do more and more with hospice content. Um, the LPNs are certified as um, hospice volunteers. All the students there get it, and many faculty and staff, including myself, get certified to work with people who are on hospice. Martha Ketchewan, there's an award set up with a foundation here for a nursing graduate to, um, a nursing student to be awarded every year. Um, let's see, oh, in simulation, we have a simulation lab. And they've made an end of life simulation where you can actually simulate someone going from the hospital, acute care, to, to the home care and hospice and then dying. So it's a really beautiful thing. The big message I think for me in this story is that if a woman at the end of her life on her deathbed can find a way to have purpose and feel useful, then all of us can. So if each of us can think of a way that we can have purpose and help somebody, or if you can't, look at those around you, your family members, and help them find a way to be needed or have a purpose. And if we can do that, then the legacy of Martha will absolutely live on and on and on in all of us. So I really want to thank Martha Ketchewan for sharing her life and her death with me. It was a great honor. And I want to thank all of you for coming to hear her story. Thank you.